Joining me now, former governor of Arkansas and Fox News contributor Mike Huckabee and Harvard Law Professor Emeritus and author of the introduction for the Mueller report, the final report of the special counsel into Donald Trump, Russia collusion, Alan Dershowitz. All right, Professor, what do you make of Barr's response? Looked like he was at a hunting lodge there to Bob Mueller. Well, he was 100 percent right. Uh, Mueller should have come to a conclusion. I think if he had come to a conclusion, it would have been there was no obstruction of justice, but he was probably pressured by his staff members not to come to that conclusion. He should have come to that conclusion. And I think the only thing Barr should have said that he didn't say is that there should no longer ever be any special counsel. The Mueller investigation puts the final nail in the coffin of special counsel, special prosecutors. The attorney general could do this himself. There are staff people, there are civil servants, there are full-time line prosecutors. Everything that was done here could be done by them. When the special prosecutor, the special counsel in this case, says, I couldn't have indicted the president anyway, according to the Constitution, then what was his investigation all about? As Judge Ellis pointed out in the Manafort case, they weren't interested in Manafort. They were interested in squeezing Manafort so that he could sing, maybe even compose, against President Trump. And it turned out there was nothing against President Trump. There was no illegal collusion. There was no collusion of any kind with the Russians. And the investigation should have ended the day that decision was made. But it continued on and on and on with collateral crimes, many of which were not even committed, and others of which, if right. they were committed, could have been easily prosecuted by ordinary prosecutors. Uh, uh, so uh, I think we're seeing the death knell of the special counsel's office. Oh, no. It's a, I, I couldn't agree more. That performance yesterday by Mueller, I got into a big row with our fav one of our favorites, Saul Weisenberg, last night, because he thought, oh, well, he, it, was, it, it was fine for him to come out and make that statement yesterday, that nine-minute statement. You know, he didn't agree with everything, but that was fine. But Governor Huckabee, I think that statement in and of itself was an indication as to why this whole special counsel uh, uh, statute, provision, the way it goes, has got to be just done away with. Just do line prosecutions, but these special counsels are always opening the door mm -hmm. to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to corruption or to bias or to concern about bias. I don't think any good comes of it. I really don't. Well, I couldn't agree more with uh, Professor Dershowitz, who, by the way, is simply brilliant. And one of the things that I have admired most about him is that he is an admitted liberal and someone who voted for Hillary. But he's played this as a matter of the rule of law and an issue of civil liberties, which is what we should want from every single attorney and certainly from every law professor in the country. And for that, uh, I offer my sincere uh, appreciation to uh, Alan Dershowitz. Here's a Thank big contra uh, or let's say contrast between Barr and Mueller. Mueller comes out and speaks for nine and a half minutes, s does not take a single question. Barr, on the other hand, sits down in an interview and takes questions. There is a huge difference in somebody who simply comes out and says, I'm not going to say anything other than what's in the report, but I'm going to toss some red meat over to the Democrats in Congress versus the attorney general who says, sure, I'll take your questions. I got nothing to fear and nothing to hide. Keep I, in mind that contrast. Yeah, I but mean, I think the other thing that Barr, the other thing that Barr was right about is it is not the proper role of special counsel to serve as an investigator for Congress. He right. should not have said yesterday two of the things he said. Number one, when he said that if the evidence had clearly showed he was innocent, we would have said so. That's not what a prosecutor should say. That's what. Comey said when he condemned right. Hillary uh, Clinton. And second, he said, well, there's another branch of government that should be doing this. Yeah. Let the other branch of the government do the investigation. You're not the handmaiden. Well, he shouldn't have the, said anything. Uh, Committee. He, he shouldn't have yeah. said anything he about shouldn't, that. that. You know, he said too little yeah. in the report. He said too little in the report because he didn't come to the conclusion. And then he said too much after the report. Everything he's done since that report came out has been wrong. The report itself and yeah. then what he said the other day. I hope we will never hear any more from special counsel, special prosecutors, or special no. anybody else. They yeah. do well, much more harm than good, and they, uh, they upset the rule of law and the constitutional well, status they, it's, it's, of it's, it's criminalizing politics. We've talked about it before. And, gentlemen, mm -hmm. i got to point this out. House Democrats now have been ramping up their campaign to get special counsel Mueller to testify publicly. Let's watch. Bob Mueller has one more service to provide the country much as he appears reluctant to do so, and that is 
he really should testify before the Congress. He doesn't get to decide whether or not he testifies before the American people. And he doesn't get to decide which questions he can talk about. I think it's likely that Special Counsel Mueller will return. I mean, he, uh, Mueller could not have been more clear that that's it for him. I mean, he looked like he was passing a kidney stone in that nine minutes, okay? He did not look happy to be there. Governor, should he testify, though, and whom would that benefit? I think it would benefit the truth. And I, I, I just would think that for the first time, we might get uh, our money's worth out of the $35 million that we spent, pop some popcorn and sit and listen to people uh, ask Bob Mueller, why did he pick the people that he did to serve on that staff who were uh, Clinton donors? Was there any balance? Was there any consideration to try to pe get people who were completely independent of a political bias? Uh, there are some questions that would, I know, be delightful to watch. Uh, and, and I don't think Democrats really want uh, Bob Mueller to show up and testify under oath because it probably will not be good for them. I want to play something for both of you from the Obama's longtime confidant, trusted advisor, Valerie Jarrett, who was being interviewed, uh, I think it was on, I don't know what it was on, but she was being interviewed um, yeah, on Sirius Radio. And this is, again, a, a conversation about, is there a double standard here? Trump might not get impeached, but would Obama have been impeached if he had done the same things? Watch. If President Obama had done half of the things and said half of the things that President Trump is saying, even, you know, as uh, recently as this morning, um, would he have been impeached? And how long do you think it would have taken? About a nanosecond. <laughs> yes, I, think it, I think that the standards have slipped dramatically and there's no earthly way President Obama could have gotten away with any of this. Well, I think a lot of people would say the Obama folks might have gotten away with a lot uh, during the time of the Obama administration, whether it's Fast or Furious or the IRS or trailing reporters or now the FISA abuses. Uh, but, Professor Dershowitz, your thoughts on the Obamas? I mean, she's kind of alter ego of the Obamas. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I know Valerie Jarrett. She's a very decent person. I work with her and I met with her on numerous occasions during the Obama administration. Of course, Obama never would have been impeached because impeachment is improper. And I think the Democrats would have realized and the Republicans would realize you don't just impeach on Maxine Waters ground. Maxine Waters says the grounds for impeachment are whatever Congress says it is. That makes Congress above the law because the Constitution specifies high crimes and misdemeanors. In other words, there must be high crimes to impeach. And if President Obama had done what President Trump is alleged to have done, there'd be no high crime. So there wouldn't have been impeachment. There wouldn't have been talk of impeachment. This is a clear attempt to violate the Constitution in the interests of one party. And if the Hillary Clinton had been president, they were trying to impeach her for non-impeachable offenses, I'd be making the same arguments. The only difference is they'd build a statue to me on Martha's Vineyard, and they'd be inviting me to every possible dinner party because I'd be defending their <laughs> champion, Hillary Clinton. But I don't care whose party is being affected. I will always state the law objectively and neutrally and read the Constitution the way it was written by the framers. All right. Well, um, Alan Lickman, the political historian who successfully He's predicted the last nine presidents, I think, including Trump's 2016 victory. Mm -hmm. He explained why most Democrats today are pushing for impeachment. Let's watch. Trump is it in 2020 unless what? Unless the Democrats grow a spine and do their <laughs> constitutional duty and move into an impeachment inquiry. And I think the evidence will show ultimately an impeachment. Governor. So the only way, he says, that they can uh, beat Trump is to buy him, basically by impeaching him. Well, first of all, only 29 percent of the American people think impeachment is appropriate. But even if they think impeachment is a wonderful idea, then I would say to them, go for it. Knock yourselves out. Put the evidence out there. If you honestly believe that the results of the election should be overturned by impeachment, not the next election, then go ahead and have the guts to do yeah. it and see what happens. It's going to be a disaster for the Democrats, and it will ensure the re-election of President Trump in 2020. And also, the case would get to the Supreme Court very likely. If the Congress adopted the Maxine Waters approach and put themselves above the law and tried to impeach any president 
without evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors, the Supreme Court might very well have jurisdiction to decide that case. Two former justices said that in concurring and dissenting opinions, and I suspect there might be a majority today in the Supreme Court if you had an overt attempt to subordinate the Constitution, subvert the Constitution, and use the impeachment power as a way of reversing an election. That's not what the framers had in mind. Well, Alan, they rejected explicitly well, that concern, that Alan, issue. Alan, how would yeah. it get to the Supreme, <clears throat> Supreme Court, though? How would it ever get there? Well, if the president were to be impeached, his lawyers would bring a case to the Supreme Court seeking dismissal of the indictment, essentially, dismissal of the impeachment. Remember also but is it, that don't the they Chief decide Justice it's a, wait, wait, they, they decide it's a political question, though. You think John Roberts and these guys are going to want to get involved? It's not a political I mean, question. They, but I, it's not I a political worry question that John Roberts the and the four liberals would say that. That's, I'm worried about that. Well, remember that John Roberts presides over the trial in the Senate. And if I yeah. were the lawyer for the president, the first motion I would make would be to the Chief Justice saying this impeachment has to be dismissed because it doesn't follow the terms of the Constitution. It's not a political question no. when you're asking justices of the Supreme Court to apply the Constitution. It goes back to Marbury versus Madison. When Congress acts in violation of the Constitution, the Supreme well, the Court, Court is the ultimate arbiter. You know, um, this is an unbelievable scenario, even a, comp a contemplate. Both of you are phenomenal uh, to try to analyze it for us tonight. Thank you so much. And, is and the thank you, Governor, for your kind words. Absolutely. <laughs> Buckle up. We start with a Fox News alert tonight. The president is now taking major action to secure our southern border. Just moments ago, announcing a brand new tariff on Mexico, pressing this country now to stem the flow of migrants that are overwhelming our entire immigration system. We'll have a lot more later in the program. First, though, tonight, the deep state is in a complete panic mode. The walls are closing in. We are now only days away, as we've been told by the attorney general, from the release of major documents exposing the corruption at the highest levels of our government. Now, remember, the attorney general said that he expects the inspector general Horowitz to report on FISA abuse any day. And then, of course, we have the other four devastating buckets that we keep talking about, exposing what is the real election scandal to one Robin election and secondly, undermine a duly elected president. But first, as we told you last night, the Russia hoax, it's dead. It is buried. It's non-existent. And by the way, just hours after his nine and a half minute statement fueling Democrats hopes once again of impeachment and more hysteria and breathless reporting. Well, Robert Mueller has now already backtracked because last night the Department of Justice and the special counsel, they actually had to release a joint statement to correct what Mueller said. In other words, Mueller needed to walk back everything he said yesterday in a dramatic fashion because he totally contradicted everything that he'd been saying. Now, clarification. Well, it wasn't exactly that, but it said this. But for the OLC, Office of Legal Counsel, opinion that Mueller would have found the president obstructed justice. Well, the statement entirely consistent with the attorney general's previous remarks in spite of the media mob's coverage. Remember, Barr said that Robert Mueller told him over and over again and numerous other people heard it and explaining just weeks ago. Mueller stated three times to us in that meeting that he emphatically was not saying that but for the Office of Legal Counsel opinion, he would have found obstruction. In other words, the Justice Department policy of whether you can or cannot indict a sitting president was never an issue, period. What does this mean? As the Attorney General Barr said today, Mueller could have reached a conclusion as to whether there was any criminal activity, but he chose not to. Take a look. I personally felt he could have reached the decision. In your view, he could have reached a conclusion. Right. He could have reached a conclusion. Uh, the opinion says you cannot indict a, a president while he's in office, but he could have reached a decision as to whether it was criminal activity. But uh, he had his reasons for not doing it, which he explained. And I'm not going to, you know argue about those reasons. Uh, but when he didn't make a decision, the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, and I felt it was necessary for us uh, as the heads of, uh, of the department to reach that decision. 
So the attorney general, and by the way, that's because Democrats like Jerry Nadler wanted to get rid of the old independent counsel statute. That means the attorney general is the final arbiter. He's made up his mind, along with the deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, and the nonpartisan Office of Legal Counsel. They were all crystal clear. For the media mob, let me spell it out for you. Zero findings that the president obstructed justice. None. And by the way, it had nothing to do with some Justice Department policy, not because of a legal constitutional restriction, because there was no evidence. Now, make no mistake, this is no cover up, no case against the president, no collusion, no underlying crime, no intent, no obstruction. In other words, the opposite of Hillary. But of course, the radical extreme socialist Democrats, the rage Trump media mob, well, they refuse to focus in on the truth on this major issue. Ask yourself this, why didn't the media mob report with the same intensity the release of the clarifying remarks of Robert Mueller after he botched it yesterday morning? Why didn't they put the same passion in as they did the nine and a half minutes of Robert Mueller? Here's another question, why are they so lazy, so predictable, so partisan? Why are they fake news? Why do they feign moral outrage and then purposely fail to tell their viewers, as little as they are, the truth. How did they become so partisan? How did they become so political, so corrupt, that they just refuse to answer simple questions and inform their viewers? The clarification of Mueller was massive. The correction was massive. So why do they choose to continue to peddle another